The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. sing together. Now is the time of grace. Now is the day of salvation. Turn now and see God's face. Now behold God's invitation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us, O God of salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. Let's sing together. Now is the time of grace, now is the day of salvation. Turn now and see God's face, now behold God's invitation this is the fast that God would choose to loose the bonds of injustice to let the captives go free and to break the yoke of oppression sharing your bread with the hungry and welcoming the homeless in offering hope and offering help this is what God requires let's sing now is the time of grace, now is the day of salvation. Turn now and see God's face, now behold God's invitation. Then shall your light break forth as dawn, and healing shall come to you quickly. Then you shall call, and God shall answer. God's love shall go before you. Let's sing. Now is the time of grace. Now is the day of salvation. Turn now and see God's face. Now behold God's invitation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and around and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. 
For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And Jesse said, There remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The term left behind gets a lot of traction in our society, especially over the last 10 or 20 years mostly because of the rise of a series of books called the Left Behind series, mostly because of the movies that came from it, mostly because of the narrow number of Christians who think that Left Behind describes what happens at the end when Jesus comes to be with us and the world is redeemed in glory. Well, what they actually believe is that at the time that Jesus comes, all the faithful of the world, all the true believers, all the people who have not made any mistakes and kept their nose clean, will be taken up with Christ into heaven, and that all of the bad folks, the rest of us, because I'm certainly no saint any more than I'm a sinner, will be left behind. Left behind is a scary thing to be. Left behind isn't something you want to have happen to you. When I was a kid and someone was left behind, it meant that they didn't make the transition with the rest of us from one grade to another, maybe from fourth to fifth grade. They were left behind a year. Left behind was something that you thought about when you got picked last to play on the baseball team or some other team because your athletic prowess and everything else about you made you less popular than the folks who were picked first. Left behind is not good news. Today, in the story that you heard from the Old Testament, we hear the story of one left behind. The story is about the picking of the second king of Israel. Saul was the first. Saul was acclaimed by all the people because he was tall, dark, and handsome, accordingly. He had charisma, and the people followed him. But it's clear from the story that it was not God's choice to have a king in the first place, let alone Saul. And so Saul, predictably, has grown more distant from God over time. Saul has failed in many things. Uh, Saul has not kept the promises of being the king of Israel and a servant of the Most High God. And so now God has decided to choose for himself a king. And that king will come from the sons of Jesse, who lives in Bethlehem. Yes, the same Bethlehem from which Jesus will spring. Jesse of Bethlehem's sons will produce the next king of all of Israel. So God sends Samuel, the prophet there, to anoint the new king. The pretense for his coming is a sacrifice where all the town will worship together, Jesse and his family included. And so as they gather and they make preparations, Samuel apparently tells Jesse what's going on. And they line up all the sons of Jesse. And the first one, the oldest one, the handsome one, the tall one, he comes forward and Samuel thinks, well, certainly this must be the one. But the word of the Lord in his ear says, no, this isn't the one. And so one after the other, they come before Samuel and the word is, no, not this one. No, not this one. No, Not this one until there aren't any sons remaining. Samuel is puzzled. So he says to Jesse, are there any other sons, people who aren't here? And Jesse says, well, the youngest one, the littlest one, the runt of the litter, he's he's out taking care of the sheep. We brought the important ones in. 
Samuel says, go and get him, this one who's been left behind. And so they bring David. David comes before Samuel, and the word of the Lord is this one. This one has a heart like mine. This one, this one shall be the king of Israel. The one who was left behind is now raised, anointed to be king, and becomes the greatest leader in the history of Israel up to the time of Jesus. It shouldn't surprise us that God picks the runt of the litter, the left behind in this story. In fact, it's pretty much the modus operandi of this God. This God who picked Abraham out of an obscure place somewhere in Mesopotamia and showed him a new land. Not because he was tall, dark, and handsome, not because he was successful or rich, not because he came from a good family, but simply because he had the faith to trust and to listen. Throughout the history of all of Scripture, we find God picking up the left behind. Remember the story of the shepherd who loses one sheep and leaves the 99 to go search. Or the woman who sweeps her whole house looking for one coin that she's lost. God redeems the left behind. God comes for us when we feel like we've been isolated and put away. God searches for us. And maybe that's the hardest thing for us to get our arms around. That God wants to get his arms around us. (laughs) You see, God is searching for us constantly. We who are lost, we who stray, we who've been left behind by society, by our failures... We who don't have a place in the world are being searched for at this very moment by God, the God of the left behind. When Jesus comes again, I have no doubt that there will be glory in singing for all of those who recognize him, but we're told that that might be harder than we think. And if, in fact, there is any truth to the faithful being taken up and the rest left behind, I have a suspicion that based on the story of Jesus, based on the story of Jesus which leaves him dying on a cross between two thieves, based on a story of Jesus that finds him consorting with the blind and the lame and the broken and the hungry, based on the story of Jesus who reveals God's true nature to us, that you will not find God among the lifted up and glorified. You will find God among the left behind. Because God will not rest until everything that has been left behind is taken up into the embrace of God. Because all creation and every creature, including you, whether you're left behind or in the midst of things, is beloved by God. So maybe you feel left behind right now as the world is more and more isolated. But you're not. God is searching for you. Maybe you feel like your life's a failure and there is no way to redeem it. That no one could love you, not even God. God may be able to love every other person in the world except you because of your failures. That you will be left behind, but God is looking for you, for God leaves no one behind. You see, God is a God of love that holds everything and everyone together. And God will not rest until the left behind are made part of the body. Amen. Send me Jesus, send me Jesus, send me Jesus, send me Lord.
Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the presence of God in the midst of our loneliness and isolation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick and struggling with virus, for public health officials trying to lead, for all of us as we live with the stress and upheaval of our daily lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for the things that we now name silently or aloud, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. May our loving God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and peace. Amen.
You are the people of God, marked with the cross of Christ forever. Go in peace, share God's love. Thanks be to God.